Where in the okay. where, where in the world is that part you need? What part are we looking for this week? So the part I was looking for this week is a right angle tactile switch that's easy for people, not machines. I want I don't have any other um, acrylic uh, knowing you know um, enclosure. I want people to be able to press these buttons very easily. So they're right angle surface mount tactile buttons. So let's. Uh, but how do we find them? Well, we're gonna have to wait 72 days, 13 hours, 21 minutes. And while we wait, let's go to DigiKey. Okay, so uh, let's look for uh, these tactile buttons. So when you look for, because something is so, you know, the more popular something is, the more names there are for it. So you can call them tactile switches, tactile buttons, or push buttons. There's like so many names. Um, I, I just use the, the term tactile switch. Even though technically most people would think a switch is something that switches on or off and a button is something you press. I know, I know, I know, but th this is what we call it. Current flows from positive to negative, electrons move from negative to positive. These things are called tactile switches. It's just like life. We just have to deal with it. Um, push button switches, which is what you think you would be calling it. These, I think, are more like larger buttons that are like they have like a top to them i don't know the like real reason why some things are push buttons some are tactile maybe there's like a spring contact because i think some of these have like a tactile contact in them a tactile contact it's like a, this dome and you press the dome and then the dome makes the connection for you mysteries but anyways what we want is tactile switches um and there's there's a lot there's not like infinite, but there's there's quite a few. There's about uh, 5,000 different ones. And on one hand, there's a lot of different switches. On the other hand, there aren't really that many switches. Like a lot of switches are kind of the same. So like these are six millimeter tactile switches. And you see one's from C&K and one's from E-Switch. And this is another one from APM. And you're looking at these and you're like, these kind of look the same. Yeah, they look the same. You know, tactile switches have a lot of uh, common form factors that were, you know, maybe Omron eventually originally came up with them. Maybe, like, I don't even know. Like, 3M. Who knows? Some company came up with these, and they've just become genericized to the point where um, if you need a switch, chances are you don't need to get it from... There's, it, it's probably not going to be like there's only one place to get it. It's probably like a generic component, which is really good because the switches that you pick, um, you don't want to, like it's like a resistor, you know, you can get a 5 or 1% resistor from everywhere. It doesn't matter whether it's from Yagio or Panasonic or like Venkel or whoever. Similar with switches, you don't want, you don't want to have to be stuck with one source of switches. Um, I have, and I have um, been screwed over by that because the company is just like, we're no longer making this switch. And I'm like, well, I, I still need it. And they're like, tough. We're French. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, and then I had to go and like look around. And I eventually did find another company that was making a compatible one, but like it was a little frustrating. Anyways, enough about that. So let's uh, look for the active and in stock parts. Um... We also want a surface mount, and we wanted a surface mount right angle, okay? Why surface mount not through hole? Because I don't want to have a through hole soldering step. You're going to get a lot stronger switches with through hole, but I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice that and just try to put more solder. One of the things I found out, actually, a lot of people who got matrix portals in the last Ada box, their switches did break off. Not a lot. It was like 10 people, but it was enough in like one week that I was like, wow, I need to revise the footprint for this part to give it a lot more solder so it's more mechanically stable. This is one of the things you just, you send out 4,000 with something you learn. Uh, there you go, surface mount, right angle. Easy, so that's really nice because it will uh, reduce the quantity down to about uh, 75 remaining. So let's go. We'll see, DigiKey site's um, nice and fast this week. They did some work on it, I can tell. All right, so now, um, Okay, so next step is operating force. And this is a thing that a lot of people, uh, you're just like, well, what's, what's the deal with operating force and, and how do I know what it is? The answer is you don't. You buy a couple switches with whatever force is available. It was 100, you know, 150, 200, 250, and you, you physically press them and you see how you feel about them. Um, in my opinion, 150 is kind of like a, a softer but clicky switch. Under 100 is like soft. 
And over and like 250 or above is like, ooh, you're like, I'm clicking. It's clicky. It's very qualitative, as you can tell. You should just get them and um, try them out. Here's something I learned today. You're wondering what's PIP? It's paste and pad. It's through hole, but it's designed so that you put like a big chunk of paste using your um, surface map process, and then you can place the part with a pick and place machine, and it goes through the reflow, and so you get the best of both worlds. You get like the the through hole physical strength, but the surface mount ease of manufacturing. Um, I never used this trim before, but today I learned it. So congratulations, you're gonna learn with me. I do not want it to be illuminated. So get rid of that. I don't want it to be flush, but I don't know if I want rectangular button or standard. So let's go check out the difference. Rectangular button, standard. I don't know, I think standard and rectangular button are kind of the same. Flush, this one's flush, and this is, yeah, I don't want that. That's like, you know, you have something that that um, presses it. So let's go back up here, and uh, I don't want plunger for cap. I don't want a cap. I want it to be, you know, all, all in one. And then I want it tape and wheel. Don't want tubes, don't want bulk, because I want this to go through the pick and place machine. Okay, so now um, let's see what we got. So I will, there's two th techniques you can use here, of course. Um, well, I like to, um, when I'm making something that's going to be manufactured, I usually like to show the prices at, um, you know, 1000 or 5000 The reason is, is with the recent change where um, tape and reel and cut tape and digi-reel are not separate listings, the pricing is a little bit tougher to compare because you see the pricing at one, quantity one. You want to see the pricing at quantity 5,000 because it, it's going to make a big difference. You're going to, it's going to be like off by like an order of magnitude, sometimes two orders of magnitude. Okay, so there's these, and, you know, I actually got some of these, and um, they were okay. They're very small, in my opinion, um, but they, you know, and, and they're softer also, I felt like. Let me see what they... Um, they say is the uh, gram force. So 160. But I really liked, I kind of went, you know, and you can see again, there's like multiple suppliers. So Panasonic makes one, and then this one, also Panasonic, and then like there's this one from uh, CNK. Again, almost the same style. But, um, and then this one was just kind of cool. This is like a weird mutant, like they took a six millimeter right angle, and then they just like bent the legs and made it a surface mount. But this one was too big for me. Um, like, it's kind of massive, in my opinion. So this is the only one I ended up with. I like this one. It's elegant. Works pretty well. Um, again, these pads here, I made them like 20, 30% bigger. Um, this was okay, but I did have a couple break off. So I think if I were you, or if you were me, um, increase these pads a little bit. Um, and you can download, uh, oh, that's cool. You can download like a CAD model. I don't know if they have a, um, they do not have like the easy CAD, but this is pretty easy to draw, um, this footprint, but yeah, just make the, uh, the solder pads a little bit bigger. And then of course it's in the data sheet as well. So this is the one I used. I kind of like it. I mean, it's, it's, it's nice and clicky. It's, um, easy for your fingers to feel, which I like that. I like it. you don't have, you shouldn't have to like look at the button to see if you're pressing it. So I'm using it a lot more, um, especially where, uh, oh, let's go to the overhead. I can show. So like this, this design where it's going to have, you know, a bonnet on top of it. So no, there's no button, like any button here wouldn't be accessible. But with these right angles, I can still get to these buttons to press them even though there's something on top. I think I like that. They feel nice, nice and clicky. All right, that's the great search. And that's the great search. That's Lady Ada and Digi King. Where in the world is